Mia is a licensed psychologist who has authored a brand new book out for just about a month called The College Student's Guide to Mental Health, Essential Wellness Strategies for Flourishing in College. The book is one of the first comprehensive guides written directly for college students and offers a wealth of accessible and practical information and strategies, much of it based on Mia's 20 years as a mental health therapist at McAllister College. I certainly wish Mia's wisdom had been around when I was, <laughs> back in the day when I was a college student, I'm sure I really could have benefited from it. It is an especially timely book um, because uh, we are in the midst of a rising youth mental health crisis. And so uh, Mia's uh, book can help address those um, college students who, who are struggling with anxiety um, and depression, which my husband, who's a professor on the St. Paul campus, uh, and Francis probably can attest, there are a lot of, lot of students who are facing mental health issues. Uh, the book can be, of course, used by the students, but also their families. And it is available at purchase for purchase tonight at the end of the event. Back there, Seth, he's got a card reader, a uh, special Sapla price. So pick up your copy on the way out. You can also find it at Boreal, Barnes & Noble at Roseville. And I think, Mia, you're going to be at Barnes & Noble at Roseville. And of course, you can buy it online. Mia holds a BA from Carleton College and an MA in Counseling and Student Personnel Psychology from the University of Minnesota. Seth, um, whom I've already pointed to, is here tonight and we welcome him too. Mia's being interviewed by Dr. Melissa Lundquist. Melissa is an Associate Professor and the BSW Program Director in the School of Social Work at the University of uh, St. Thomas. Her current scholarship examines grief literacy, and you can find a research project in the U of M D2D booth at the fair this summer. So if you plan to go to the fair, like all Minnesotans, look uh, Missy up uh, in the B2B building. Um, uh, prior to academia, Miss Melissa had more than 20 years of practice working with families facing cancer, and she currently volunteers as a patient companion and bereavement support group facilitator. Her husband, Mark, is with us too, and, and also Mark's mother. Yeah, so welcome. Um, Melissa will start the conversation with Mia, and there will be time at the end for your questions and answers. We regrettably will have to end the conversation at 7.30 because the library closes at 8 and we have to pack up all the chairs and equipment, but we encourage you to wander over to Nico's afterwards and go to the back room and join us for food and drink and also for more conversation. So just head on there. Um, food and drink are uh, on, on your own, um, but we'd be happy to talk with you and uh, share tonight's wonderful event. So so please welcome Melissa and Mia. All right, well, hello. Oh, you can hear me okay? I think so. Uh, thanks, Bernie. Um, welcome, everyone. It's really good to see everyone, and it's, like, it's such a thrill for me to get to ha be in conversation with you in this way because we have these conversations all the time, and this, this time we get to have something that's really intentional and, mm -hmm. and celebrate this work because it's really, as a college professor, it is really, really important work. Um, so... Let's get started. Ready? Okay. Well, first, just tell us um, what inspired you to write the book. I was inspired by my curiosity about what I was doing as a full-time therapist at, at McAllister in the Health and Wellness Center versus what I had been taught to do. So kind of looking at what's the reality of what students are bringing in and why didn't I know a lot of <laughs> this? <laughs> Why wasn't I taught this? Or um, so I wanted to make sense of it. So that's kind of the initial impetus for it. And then the other initial impetus was honestly the mental health crisis that we're all talking a lot about more now in this moment has been going on for. I mean, it felt like it was rising when I started at Mac, which was in two thousand and one. Or, you know, like 2002, 2003, we started to see a rise in um, mental... Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Something blue. <laughs> Is it okay? Oh, good. Um, so trying to gather together um, what 
what, what were the issues coming into my office and basically I wanted to write the book that I didn't I couldn't find anywhere mm -hmm. that was what are the what are the issues that college students bring in for mental health counseling and what are the what are strategies that work for them and then it, it morphed into as in the teens the mental health crisis started to really accelerate this is all pre-pandemic. <laughs> I think the acceleration of the teens was um, partly cell phones, but also divisions in society and lots of other issues. And trying to um, separ uh, provide something that was about mental health and wellness. What, what, what isn't actually mental illness, but what's, what are, what's everyone working on and kind of needs to work on mm -hmm. just to be a, a normal mm -hmm. student and it just felt like there was no good resource for that. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I tried to put it together. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, so, in the title, you use the term mental health. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit, or tell us about why that topic and how, or that's that language and how you think about what mental health is? I think that a lot of people, when they hear mental health, what they actually think of is mental illness. So it isn't part of our cultural vocabulary to just what it, what does mental health mean? You know, what is a part of mental health? Like mm -hmm. knowing what you're, you know, knowing how to express emotions or knowing what your thoughts are. Like we don't talk about that or managing your time or having healthy relationships. Like all these things, they're just mm -hmm. not what people are talking about generally. So mm -hmm. trying to get more language on making something about mental health and wellness and flourishing mm -hmm. versus like waiting for it to be illness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. trying to get that. Yeah, and I, I and I can see where that's more more inviting in a title than college guide to mental illness. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> college college guide to not being mentally yeah, ill. Right. <laughs> I could grab a few people, but it's <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <That's> ironic. Right? <laughs> uh, so the other part is it's for college students. And what is unique about being in college? What is unique about that age and that experience that you can really write a whole book in that framing and focusing in that, that short span of life? Yeah. I mean, for there's many, actually many different kinds of college students. Mm -hmm. The traditional students that we kind of tend to think of are the 18-year-olds that are going off to college. But really, a lot of people live some life and then go to college. So mm -hmm. I... I do want to try to embrace all of them, but like for traditional college students, it's a lot of times the first time being away from home, those kind of traditional things. It's a lot of pressure of, oh, this is actually really expensive and I've got to figure out what I'm doing with my life. Yeah. And the hallmark is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know who I am as a person. Now that people kind of aren't telling me what to do all day long in high school, I get to figure that out. I, I, I want to figure that out. I want to figure out what I want to, what I'm going to study that might have something to do with my mm -hmm. career. I'm making friends that maybe I didn't grow up with. So making new friends, there's all this huge transition mm -hmm. and uncertainty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and lots more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of unfound freedom. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, tell us more about the book. So... How do you describe it, and what kind of college student do you think would really benefit from it, or like who are, who were you thinking of when you wrote it? Was I I mean, because I worked at McAllister, I did work with traditional age college mm -hmm. students, but honestly, I've had readers from um, community colleges and big universities review it as well. So mm -hmm. I think it is applicable to anybody who's in school. Um, any, any student who's wanting kind of a primer on what constitutes mental health and strategies. I've also heard that it could be good for like seniors in high school and mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. <laughs> are interested. Definitely. In so Yeah, d definitely. I kept thinking, oh, I could give it to this person and this person and this person and this person. And because of the title, I, I don't feel uncomfortable giving it to someone because mm -hmm. it's a strength-based kind yeah. of perspective, a wellness whole perspective. It's not that other title. You're mentally ill, yeah. so <laughs> take this book. Yeah, like I'm really worried about you. Can you please take this? Yeah. I recently had one of my college friends, I had given her a book, and I was out to dinner with her daughter who's 25, 
And, you know, I was just saying, oh, you know, that's about da-da-da. And mm -hmm. after I left, she asked her mom for the copy, and she said, Mom, I'm still there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I do think when you're in your 20s, you're also in a lot of right. uncertainty, <laughs> developmentally you're developing right. yourself. And right, so and put that post-college transition, too, it's right? Big, I feel like it's this would big. really apply to that, too. Yeah. Um, well, so there are resources for college students to access, but this is different. So how is how would you differentiate this from someone going onto the onto the Google, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or going to a friend or going to right. a counseling center? Like, what is unique and different about this? What's what is different is that it's all in one place in one book, mm -hmm. and it's I'm someone who should be I am literate in uh, what's on the internet, but. I find it, I, who should know, find it really hard to find things. Mm -hmm. Good, really good sites, you're clicking in over and over again, it's not like just written out, easy to find, and where my book is, all 35 chapters have the same layout, where you, you know, it's consistent. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I do think that that makes it a little different, it's all in one place, mm -hmm. easy to access, mm -hmm. whereas all the topics, hopefully are out mm -hmm. there in a good way, but you have to look so many different places. Right. And if you're looking on TikTok, you might be finding someone who is thinks they know what they're doing, but they haven't had any training. <laughs> you know, you're not for sure getting mm -hmm. uh, reliable information, and mm -hmm. a lot of young people are going on the internet to find mm -hmm. it, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, and we talked a bit about how if, when you Google it, right, you mm -hmm. go down these rabbit holes then, and then maybe you go down a rabbit hole that's not healthy and not yeah. helpful, and then you end up not actually getting the help that you need. Right. And it can be almost a distraction. Yeah. And one of the really the challenging things about going online in the first place is mm -hmm. comparing to other people. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, you think you might see someone who you think you should be like, mm -hmm. and you don't know what they're really mm -hmm. like, and mm -hmm. so then you're adding all these layers right, right, to it right. Make, can make it really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about the, what's in the book. Okay. So tell us a little bit about how you decided what to put in, and because mental health is such a huge issue, how do you, how do you curate and decide what, what rises to the top that you want to make sure that you address? Mm -hmm. And then, well, let's start there, and then I have a follow-up. I curated what was in the book by taking years, I started writing it in 2007, um, to look at what was coming in my office and what I thought were, what were the things I was going over over and over, and over again with my students. So it was, it's, it is based on my experience of just real life, like what are, what are people coming and crying about and mm -hmm. <laughs> needing help with? Mm -hmm. And I broke it into six sections. Mm -hmm. um, the first is on um, your body, taking care of what a lot of people would call physical health, but mm -hmm. it's part of mental health too. Um, it is a lot of common sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not all telling people what to do, it's, it's giving people ideas. Mm -hmm. And in some, some of the chapters are a lot of reflection questions mm -hmm. to, think, to think more about who do I wanna be you know, around my alcohol use or around mm -hmm. different things. So mm -hmm. that's the first section. The second section is on identity and it's, again, reflection and different ideas for how to think about where you came from as a person. And I do acknowledge that that, that is a lifelong journey. <laughs> it's like, you are not going to know this when you're 22 and graduate. <laughs> it's just a good time to start just thinking about it. And then there's a chapter on um, where am I now? Like, what's going on for me? And then the third chapter in that section is sort of more aspirational, like mm -hmm. what what values do I aspire to? Who are, what are my role models? Just get it, giving yourself more information because a lot of times people don't take the time to think about it and it's a nice thing to think about. Mm -hmm. And then the next two sections are on um, you, how to manage and think about your emotions and your thoughts. And those both have um, a, a way to help, help people become more self-aware about what's going on and then I have different chapters that are on special topics that are really big topics that people bring in over and over again. Perfectionism, procrastination, um, stress, mm -hmm. uh, 
negativity, comparing to others, those kind of things that are just extremely common and very normal for students to be grappling with. Mm -hmm. Then the longest section is on your relationships and healthy friendships, um, boundaries, intimacy, relationships with uh, mentors and family, mm -hmm. how to survive a breakup, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that is a really big, intense thing for, Absolutely. for all of us. Mm -hmm. But when you're only 19, it's mm -hmm. it can feel like your world is ending. Mm -hmm. So couldn't let, leave yeah. that one out. I do have a, um, a grief and loss chapter mm -hmm. in the emotion section, too, because mm -hmm. I found a lot of, st which is Missy's specialty. Mm -hmm. Oh, Melissa is. Okay. No, no, Missy's fine. <laughs> Missy's fine. Because <laughs> um, so many people are having losses of some kind, whether it is a death or just a loss of a dream is very common. Mm -hmm. And like when you can acknowledge that and grieve it, it's so much healthier mm -hmm. for the young mm -hmm. person. So, mm -hmm. so after relationships, the final section is on, I call it your time, and it's t um, time management for mental health. Um, healthy media use, <laughs> which is a huge topic, and um, just getting balancing priorities, which is a just giving folks a, more of a chance to look at that. So mm -hmm. that's what I put in. Mm -hmm. Don't you think she should write one for us? Too? Like, like, <laughs> I am I not qualified for, for that developmental stage. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I don't have uh, any. My only qualification is to write for college students. That's what I did. It was very <laughs> narrow casting to that. You know, one of the things I really appreciate about each section is you introduce a topic, but then you ask for the strategy. The first strategy is always like, value this, mm -hmm. right? Can you say more about why? So yeah. for physical health, you're like, first begin by valuing mm -hmm. your yeah. physical health. Can you say I, more about that? Because to me, that's the moment that change can happen is when you decide, oh, I do, I do want to value this. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of the subtle, um, radical mm -hmm. thing of my book is that our society, I do think our culture often doesn't want us to value things that mm -hmm. don't earn money or aren't productive. Mm -hmm. So like valuing something that cares for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like sleep. Like sleep is mm -hmm. the first chapter. Um, that is, a, that's kind of a, a, a big step mm -hmm. to think about mm -hmm. it that way. So. And you just, you started with that. How did you decide to start with that? My uh, tagline for that is, I can't help you if you've only had two hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of why I was like, why I started that. I didn't yeah. start my sessions with that, but right. I did try to assess that for mm -hmm. people. Yeah, and we're seeing all the research, you know, it's just every day, every yeah. week, there's new studies that are affirming how important sleep is yeah. for every part of our well being. Right. right. And so, yeah. People don't want it to be that way. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> have to break the news. Well, and college students especially don't want to have to think like that. And I, I have in the book mm -hmm. too, like it's almost like it's not cool mm -hmm. if you've gotten a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. I say that very overtly, like mm -hmm. you'll be fighting against that. Like, oh, you must not be working hard if you got mm -hmm. eight hours of sleep. People mm -hmm. say that to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy. Yeah. Sorry. Were there <laughs> some um, topics that were easy to write, like came just really readily and, uh, and other topics that you had to struggle Trying to figure out what was the right way or the the best way that you could think right. of to convey the messages. Yeah, some came more easily because I was talking about them so mm -hmm. much. So like comparing to others and perfectionism. Mm -hmm. Just I just <laughs> was saying that over and over. Mm -hmm. um, but some were harder because I kind of did have to translate from like a session with just one person mm -hmm. to putting it into writing. So then I had to really filter that through mm -hmm. what does this look like mm -hmm. in a like in a broader yeah in, a in, broader space in, in. so what can you give an example of a topic that you just oh you gave it you talked about comparison um what were some other that just right away you thought these I know I can speak yeah. to because I've I see them so much right like sleep you know mm -hmm. I covered sleep so much um the you know, talking about stress and mm -hmm. and um, uh, imposter really, syndrome. Like, yeah. there's a lot of, like, language around those that's kind of easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, like, for the identity chapters, I sort of had mm -hmm. to, like, dig a little deeper in myself because 
that's so individual that right. I would be basing that on just whatever my client brought in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I didn't have like a system. Yeah. Like with sleep, you kind of know what you're going to say, but mm-hmm. for identity, it's pretty much mm-hmm. almost unique to each person. Right, right. So I just tried to, I had to like step back and make mm-hmm. that broader. That was really. Yeah. Oh, I thought daunting. you did a really good job, like starting from your past, like mm-hmm. what informs who you are, how yeah. you see who you are, and how you can be. Yeah. And I mean, those are really natural, big questions and progression. Right. So I thought that was really, really done well. That was good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, how do you see students using this? That's a great question because I think it has a lot of flexibility mm-hmm. for students. I do not think any, uh, well, this is this is my personal opinion and I'm open to being disagreed with, but I just don't think it's a book that's meant to be read from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. Like I really would prefer someone be drawn to a chapter and read that mm-hmm. and, um, mm-hmm use that as they, so if a student Mm -hmm. was struggling with a certain thing, just go to that chapter, Mm -hmm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it would be really cool if colleges had programming about different different topics that are so hard for Mm -hmm. students and Mm -hmm. then a student could have the book as well and use it as Mm -hmm. when they needed it. Right, right, right. And I I, I see it not as a how-to, Right, mm-hmm. like you don't say this is the right way to respond and this is mm-hmm. the right way to do that, which I mm-hmm. think is a really strong mm-hmm. part of the book. Yeah. You give strategies and ways of asking questions of yourself, mm-hmm. and then you give people permission to try. It doesn't work. Try something else. Mm-hmm. And if this isn't your issue, don't change anything. Yeah, there are people that have great sleep. Mm-hmm. They don't need that sleep chapter. <laughs> that's fine with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't mm-hmm. read it. So mm-hmm. yeah, every yeah. that's the only thing that I know for sure Mm -hmm. is that how much variety there is and Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. how different people are. You cannot say one thing's right for everybody, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially in in college, we think of the challenges around substance use. You know, know, college, we have this idea that college is this party culture. And if we're not in that space, then we're not really enjoying Mm -hmm. our experience Mm -hmm. in some way. And one of the things I thought you do really well is you don't say, well, just say no. <laughs> like, like you, no. Really, you really pull apart like what it's really like to be in that space. So mm-hmm. can you talk a little bit about your thinking behind that, that chapter. particular I, section? I wanted, um, I think where people get in trouble with drugs and alcohol, well, I mean, it, that's a really complex topic, yeah, yeah. you know. And you're not you're not offering I, prescription <laughs> and treatment, right? No, you're offering no. Questions. I mean, if you're sick with alcohol addiction, mm-hmm. you need a lot of treatment and mm-hmm. help. It's it's a very devastating mm-hmm. illness. So, but for someone who doesn't have that but is in college, it can be about like the culture at first, mm-hmm. like oh, it's cool to get drunk and mm-hmm. party and go mm-hmm. crazier. So, and not everybody has that, but some right. people. Some people do. Many mm-hmm. people do it first. And mm-hmm. so just trying to think about, well, what actually is fun for me? When is it fun? Mm-hmm. What does my family do? And what do I feel loyal to them about? Mm-hmm. Because that's true for, like, smoking cigarettes and people mm-hmm. drinking mm-hmm. and... And caffeine and Caffeine. And I try to... Processed foods, like all you of know, that. Yeah, I try to have people think of, like, oh, what is this... What's my own culture about this? Mm-hmm. What do I just trying to introduce these? Oh, you can decide for yourself. Right, right. <laughs> Which is kind of hard when you're 18 mm-hmm. to think that. You know, yeah. it's it's and really you can hard. have intentionality behind right. it. So just like saying, oh, just someone's impulse. asking me what I think, what I want to do about this. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to ask that, mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. that thought in their head, so yeah. that they can then think about it. Yeah, yeah. So. I, when you t- you know that chapter on identity, we teach that in our class. I mean, social work, I teach social work. It's all about starting with knowing who you are first mm-hmm. so that you can know what you bring to a client relationship. And so many students are like, well, I've never been asked that before. Like, well, I don't know why I believe what I believe. And mm-hmm. I don't know how, why I value family this way or that. And this is such a great introduction to that right. conversation. Right. Because we don't ask each other, we don't ask kids that for sure, mm-hmm. right? And, and mm-hmm. they don't ask each other. They don't necessarily sit around. But once you spark that question mm-hmm. it really initiates conversation between yeah. them then too right mm-hmm. helps yeah. build community absolutely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. one idea that we got from a student uh, mental health organization was to have a book club too where mm-hmm. they you could discuss a chapter a month or something yeah and I think that is like a dream of mine too that somehow 
people would sit together and talk because right. that is one of the big harms in our society right now mm-hmm. that we're not getting together face to face and talking. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it'd be really nice if that could yeah. come, yeah. come yeah. true. Definitely. Definitely. So we think about it as students using it, but it's also beneficial for parents or even I think of friends, mm-hmm. right? To have this, if their roommate is struggling to mm-hmm. like have something, right. one of the challenging things when a friend is struggling is not knowing what to say or how to respond. Mm-hmm. And then having this as a place to enter into that right. conversation. I think I have in the appendix a how to help a friend mm-hmm. <laughs> appendix mm-hmm. too, mm-hmm. which is a big thing. A lot yeah. of people really want to be a helpful friend mm-hmm. and it's nice to have that. Well, I think for parents, mm-hmm. one one really helpful thing is that it, it validates that, that these are real topics mm-hmm. that are hard for students because sometimes we don't know, oh, my kid might be struggling with this. I didn't struggle with it, but they are struggling mm-hmm. with it. Oh, it's in the book, so it's there's a, it's a thing, you know? Yeah. That validation mm-hmm. of what are the, the, the struggles, mm-hmm. like the mm-hmm. legitimate struggles that mm-hmm. don't mean there's a problem. It just means we all have to struggle mm-hmm. <laughs> to get to know ourselves and all that. So mm-hmm. I think that validation is really helpful for family and yeah, um, and, and friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You end every chapter with suggestion, resource suggestions. How did you curate those? Because you, what I really appreciate the book is that you don't have a thousand, right? You've mm-hmm. chosen two or three your key um, like books maybe websites, um, and so how did you think about what you put and where? Well, I first I tried to do what's on the college campus, like mm-hmm. to go to the resources there first. Mm-hmm. So I just, I knew what those were because I worked on a college campus for 20 years. Yeah. So I tried to put them all there, you know, generally speaking. And so then, college health center, yeah, college first counseling center, the dean of students mm-hmm. office, the, mm-hmm. all the different, mm-hmm. the chaplain office, all the mm-hmm. different places that people go. Mm-hmm. And students have said that that is so helpful. Mm-hmm. And it's like, isn't right. that? And, and, you know, we think, oh, shouldn't it be obvious? But mm-hmm. it isn't obvious because you get all that information on your first two days of college mm-hmm. and you can't remember it because <laughs> you're trying to... You're just trying to find your class. You're just trying to, yeah. trying to not, you know, explode. And mm-hmm. so it's nice to have it in writing mm-hmm. where to go. So mm-hmm. students really like that. And then I just picked, honestly, a lot of my favorite... Sure resources or the resources that are so common Mm -hmm. in my field that people, that I know people refer each other to, you know, Mm -hmm. counselors refer each other to and that Mm -hmm. are, you know, good solid resources and there are a lot of them are are bestsellers and Mm -hmm. websites that are awesome websites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed you had a lot of perennial, they've been sources of reliable sources for Decades and decades and decades. Yeah. You know, the World Health Organization yes. or certain government sites, right. too. Yeah. Yes. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. those are really good sites for mm-hmm. someone who might be in the middle, you know, mm-hmm. can't get any help from their family, but they need to know where can I get X, Y, or Z. Mm-hmm. They're, mm-hmm. They are reliable mm-hmm. sources. So. Yeah. If you were to sum up some of the key messages that you hope someone walks away with, as start, starting with a student, that a student walks away with, what would some of those key learnings or key takeaways be? One thing that I really hope students will take away is that there are things they can do. Because a lot of students think, this is a problem, there's nothing I can do. You know, mm-hmm. it's all set in stone, and that is literally the opposite of the truth. Like, there's so many strategies you can try. Mm-hmm. And to keep trying, that's, mm-hmm. that's one of my main messages. And I also really think that baby, I really want to promote baby steps <laughs> and little changes and to keep trying and that it's not supposed, uh, I think student, I think it's a developmental piece of being a, a teenager that I'm already supposed to know, I'm already supposed oh, to be no. good and yeah. have it all together, that kind of bravado that you all have seen in mm-hmm. your children, I'm and sure. Frankly, I think- <laughs> I think we need in order to yeah, leave home right, <laughs> to, a yeah, to get away. Right. So, like, I try to say, you're not. This is actually really hard to figure out. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to know this. This is a learning experience. So, mm-hmm. to take that away, mm-hmm. they can a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hard. and they really do come into the space expecting to maybe hear something once and then be able to apply it instantly and do it perfectly. 
in, cl- yes. in, the, in coursework and in life. Right. And this really lets people have permission to slow down. Yeah. The, take your time. Yeah. You, you, can, you, you correlate it with learning a, a sports skill right. or a music capacity. And I tried in one part to say, this will fail the first time you try yeah. it. Like, expect that. Mm-hmm. Expect to have to redo it a lot to mm-hmm. get where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it also, like, I see a good, a, a valuable takeaway is that it's hopeful. It is not this heavy, I'm going to read about pathology, right? It's about possibility. Mm-hmm. And this is how, these are normal things that happen to everyone in their lives. Mm-hmm. These are the things that maybe happen a little more when you're in college, mm-hmm. and right. there's a way through. Right. Yeah, and it, you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for the special something to help you through it. Like there's some right. really useful, practical, realistic strategies. Yes. I did. I didn't want all this to live just in the counseling center. Mm-hmm. That was really important to mm-hmm. me. That's a culture piece that mm-hmm. I I do hope that mental health strategies like that are in the book can be yeah part of normal education Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not just everyone goes when they feel so bad that they go to the counseling center right we gotta stop that yeah yeah (laughs) yeah that we have our check like our preventative checkups yes (laughs) like physical health right exactly exactly yeah and then how about parents what do you think a key takeaway you touched on a little, little bit with validating but you know, as a parent reading this, what do you hope they gain from it? Hopefully that to to know, I mean, probably most parents already know, like, it's... I do, I, actually, I think a lot of parents want to look back and idealize it. Like, it's so fun. You don't have a mortgage. You don't have right. this. You don't have that that you have to worry about. So they forget all the hard parts mm-hmm. and just see the fun parts. Mm-hmm. So to try to remember that it is actually a great yeah. transition time and a time of struggle, like mm-hmm. really positive struggle, but mm-hmm. to remember mm-hmm. that right. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah. That's it's a, a big that's, one. That, no, that is a huge one. <laughs> and I think one of the things that is that I take away from this also is... Um, how I think we're ready for this book in a way that maybe, like Wendy said, I would have loved to have had it, but I'm not sure if I would have appreciated it the same way. We talk about mental health in ways that we've ne- that we did in our generation okay. for sh- for sure. My students openly talk about living with anxiety or depression or bipolar disorder, or that they are re- in recovery. They talk mm-hmm. really openly about it in classes in ways that we never would have. Mm-mm. So I think the timing is really right too for this. I think this generate like I just think they they can have these conversations if we give them an opportunity and tools to have them. Right? That was one of the silver linings of the mm-hmm. pandemic. I think mm-hmm. that it's way people are talking about it mm-hmm. much more openly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. a silver lining of of the Trump presidency as well, which mm-hmm. brought mental <laughs> health yeah. issues to a lot right. more people right. who were really right. struggling and right. just had to seek help. Yeah, so. for sure, for sure. For sure. Okay, well, I could ask questions all night, but I want to make sure that people here have an opportunity to make a comment or ask some questions of Mia. Does anyone have? Are we going to use a mic for questions, or how do we want to do that? Or, or we, I can rephrase them, or... I can walk around. It, is that taped on? Or no? It is, but... You want to get some steps in? I don't think it's going to go. Uh, we can. Do you want the people lined up? Or, or? You want to? Okay, sure. See and if it, anyone has a question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the first question <laughs> since I'm here. Um, when is it appropriate for a therapist or a parent or a concerned friend to urge a young adult to that they might need more intensive um treatment. For example, um, some kids that have pronounced procrastination problems, it might be un- undiagnosed ADHD. I mean, what's or what's the right way to phrase it? Or how did you, both of you, how have you done that in your practices? Well, the best, the best way is when the student is in such distress that they want it and they seek it. Because mm-hmm. then they, they're owning it, and they're going to go do it. That's mm-hmm. your, your mm-hmm. goal. Mm-hmm. Um, because 
bringing someone to therapy to a therapy that doesn't want it is mm-hmm. zero. It's mm-hmm. not, it's not, it's made backfire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so especially a young yeah. person. So, um, and you add like each chapter ends with how do you know if you need something more than this book? Right. And so you do have those sort of prompts for, to yeah. help people think about if this is where I'm at, I probably need some help. So that's where as a parent, you could gently say, Hey, you know, I'm hearing you do this, this, I'm hearing you talk about this over and over. I think it might be related to this. You know, there's all these great strategies. There's a great treatment, Mm -hmm. whatever, Mm -hmm. a place I know that we could go and you could get help. Mm -hmm. Do you want that? Mm -hmm. And it might not be till the fourth time there they say, now I'm ready for it. You know, that would probably be (laughs) your typical scenario. Um, Because it's really, really hard. It's hard for us, too, and we're Mm -hmm. old, most of us in here. (laughs) To admit when you're like, yeah, something isn't working. Mm-hmm. I do need help. Mm-hmm. It's way harder for a young person to admit mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I thought you were you coming up. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mia, Missy, <laughs> I've got to say, um, I've read this book, and one of the things I love best about it is that it. Um, it is not condescending. It is not patronizing. Mm-hmm. It's highly readable for someone of any age. And we have a 19-year-old who I've just left it, not lying, obviously, around the house, <laughs> but her therapist has it. I introduced her therapist to it. It's the only behind the scenes. You know, I would tell my kid honestly if that were the case, but um, if they asked, but they haven't. But the therapist is taking pieces of it and using it just really actively in their sessions, and it's been really productive okay. um, to the extent that um, the therapist is now t- taking on a little more of a coaching role than they had mm-hmm. in terms of, would you be willing to try this? Would you be willing to try this? Mm-hmm. And I asked our teen um, a couple weeks ago where they'd been, and they said, oh, I went to a club at the university. I was thrilled because we've been wanting them to go to a club to meet somebody because they're living at home, meet, just meet some friends, you know? And um, I said, good for you. Um, and they said, well, my therapist made me do it. <laughs> it's actually Mia who made that. <laughs> but you know, they didn't look too unhappy about it. And they ended up going back to that club a second time. And I can tell you that is a conversation my husband and I have been having for months and it just hadn't happened. So I really want to say, wow, if you know of anyone who's got a young person in therapy, send a copy to the therapist and say, (laughs) would you be willing to kind of use this? And if your kid asks you directly, be honest. Yeah, I went to a talk. I thought this book was great, but it's out of my hands now. It's up to your therapist if they think it'd be helpful. My question for you (laughs) after that is, um, has anyone approached you yet, Mia, in terms of saying, would you be willing to develop a curriculum so our college could offer this to incoming freshmen or our high school could provide this to seniors, whether they're looking toward, you know, um, college or not? Because the day is going to come. I'm just wondering if it's come yet. I mean, I have been asked, is there a workbook that goes with it? So I haven't, it's not quite the time yet, because it just, the book just came out at the end of February. But um, there are a few colleges that are thinking about how to use it with students, Mm -hmm. and they may, I'm assuming, develop their own curriculum Mm -hmm. or method of using the book with students. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Yeah, I hope hope so, because I think it would be a good kind of textbook for a class on mental wellness and Mm -hmm. health. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Making that positive spin Mm -hmm. on, like, you can do these things. Like Mm -hmm. Right. And also to make it more of the norm. Yes. Right. No one's going to want to be caught in their room reading this book. No offense, right? No, I know. But if it becomes, oh, everyone walks into their dorm room their first year. If you know, I, again, I went to a college that everyone was in a dorm. But oh, and there it is on everybody's bookshelf. Mm-hmm. You know, they start seeing it around. Oh, there's yeah. that class. Um, yeah. I do think that would be so beautiful if every first year got it. You know, when they went to mm-hmm. college, because then, well, there's less stigma. There's less, like, they're, they're kind of the awkward, they're all trying to avoid awkwardness so mm-hmm. much, unlike, I think, our generation, like, it's so painful. But if you see, oh, everyone's got it, it's so much less awkward, right. you know, that yeah. just would, it would be so wonderful. Mm-hmm. But 
One, <laughs> one of the chapters, not a question but a comment, one of the chapters as I was thinking of that that I would think might be most approachable for some students is how to be a good friend to your friend who's in distress. Mm -hmm. That comes up so much in college, and like, where do the boundaries? Where, where mm -hmm. does that you begin and I end? And yeah. and that takes the focus in a way. It sort of saves face to the person who's reading it. Oh, it's not my issue. It's my friend. How to be a supportive friend? And then they learn about how to take care of themselves in the process. Yeah. So yeah, just a thought. Love that. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. You didn't pay her to come, did you? I didn't. I didn't care. <laughs> 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 Anyone else? It's this moment, like, I have to walk up. <laughs> um, I went to the U of M in 2003, about that time, and really struggled with perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And now I have a high schooler who is struggling with perfectionism. And I would just, my main question is, um, how do you think, what is it about our culture that breeds perfectionism? And how can we help our kids to let go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have any more advice about that. Mm -hmm. Great you. question. It is great. I'm glad it's at, you should, you're going to have to yeah. answer it. <laughs> it is, it's actually kind of a political <laughs> question with our society. Um, valuing productivity and aspiring more than, we value that more than being a good person. So it's a really deep problem, unfortunately. Um, and it's not about search of, uh, I, it's not about search of excellence. Like I just love this topic. I wanted to put everything into it. Like mm -hmm. that's not perfectionism. That's Passion, passion, mm -hmm. and wanting to be, you know, wanting to just, you know, grab something. And but for perfectionism, perfectionists never feel good about what they've done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's never enough, mm -hmm. and that kind of never enough is part of our society. Like you're, you're never, um, you never have enough money. You never have a nice enough this or that. Mm -hmm. So like, there's we're all kind of driven by that by our culture, and and so that's like a value system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's kind of sorry mm -hmm. it's so political but like mm -hmm. trying to understand that um because there's no being like being a good person and being a good friend mm -hmm. doesn't have a monetary value or you can't mm -hmm. get a grade on that and so mm -hmm. um we don't mm -hmm. emphasize that as I mean I try to in my book but mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. we don't as a society emphasize that as much so mm -hmm. <sighs> I think you That's have this hard. image of, with the with the rowboat and I can't, I can't remember where it is, but to me that image was a really valuable way of maybe rethinking what do you want to be perfect in and how or strive for and um, about be, putting being a good person as that North Star that you're mm -hmm. striving right. for rather than a perfect person or a perfect Trying to find the, 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 va the values. Mm -hmm. And there's in, in the... Got to find the image here. In, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's right part of the identity, like the third chapter of the identity. I do list different values and trying to get. Not on my, it's not on 130. What folks? page? What is the chapter? No, oh. it's the computer. Um, yeah. yeah, anyway. So yeah. I, I have, um, yeah, also role modeling when something's enough mm -hmm. and saying, yeah, we can, we can be done now. It's, it's really complicated because it's mm -hmm. like fi finding the values that you go by and trying to live that out and having, having some more firm boundaries about when something's enough. Mm -hmm. But perfectionism goes into so many things, you know, how mm -hmm. you look and work out and what you eat and, Everything's so compounded mm -hmm. by um, social media, mm -hmm. for especially for young women, mm -hmm. it seems like, mm -hmm. the research. Shows and so. that's the comparison piece, too, right? That it yeah. gets added on, in a way. This is the image I was talking about. I don't know if you remember it. Um, but just talking about how kind of complicated it is to find, like, 
you know, setting your values as your North Star or like what's your compass that's guiding you and then what's going to get in the way, what's going to support it and how are you going to get there? I think this image does a nice job. Just helping people maybe tease out some of those things, like what's the undertow that's going to pull you under? Like maybe it's going on a particular website that's going to compare me to other people or even just asking my friends what did they get in on that grade or what was their time in that event or whatever. That recognizing that's undertow, so trying to stay away from that. There's another part in the book that I think, I don't know, might be helpful to like starting to identify when something that you do actually makes you feel good mm -hmm. versus I have to do it or I should do it mm -hmm. to look good. Mm -hmm. But like trying to go from within, like I actually really love reading this kind of book, you mm -hmm. know? And we are really disconnected from that and our, our young people are really disconnected from that. Like that, how you look, um, mm -hmm. I have another image in there mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. It looks like mm -hmm. a donut. Mm -hmm. All my um, images are secretly, secretly food related. <laughs> Like, like trying to look a certain way or like, oh, I got A's and so that means mm -hmm. I'm good, but like actually don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Like, so trying to connect to where, what, you know, I don't know if it's your heart or your mm -hmm. feelings, what, when it, you know you like something. And I have some journal exercises mm -hmm. or different ways to look, to get at that because mm -hmm. they won't, not everybody will like every exercise, right. but some of them are like, yeah, this feels like something. So... Mm -hmm trying to get in touch with that mm -hmm. is really, mm -hmm. I think, helpful. Mm -hmm. That's like a similar to a value thing, but it's right. more personal. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And a, not an easy answer, right? Like that's yeah. the thing that there aren't answers necessarily, but questions that can guide you towards what works for you, yeah. I feel like, in the book, right? Absolutely. Mm. We'll see if I can arrive at a question. <laughs> it's going to form as I talk. Um, so my background is in education, taught high school students. So that's my lens and really saw a rise in anxiety. Mm -hmm. And like you both mentioned, students are really free to talk about the therapist and the work that they're doing. And so we're so pleased with that stigma going away. And at the same time, there's this rise in anxiety. Um, so students are then um, maybe re can't lean into it because it's now a problem. Like, I have anxiety. I can't. I can't take that test because of my anxiety. So we've, there's this pendulum mm -hmm. motion there. And at the same time, um, in just talking with current students in high school, they have a really hard time in school without their cell phone. They need their AirPods, music constantly for their anxiety. So you just mentioned in that answer for the young person to think within what makes me happy, yet I'm really fearful that we haven't instructed any young person that what is inside is valid. Mm -hmm. So put your AirPods in and block it all out mm -hmm. and then go about your day because you have anxiety. So mm -hmm. turn that off, which I think is then turning off anything inside. And I knew I wasn't going to have a question to you, but I, I think... Oh, no, it, you're talking about a really important issue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> good, I'll leave it there. You, yeah. you talk. yeah. I mean, this is the thing that anxiety, one of the kind of symptoms of anxiety is avoidance. Mm -hmm. And when you start avoiding things, you have, you don't learn how to cope with them. So it is kind of this problem that has come up with it's come up in a lot of different ways in higher ed, mm -hmm. um, not just about emotional stuff, but different things. And so, like, a metaphor is like, you know, you break your arm, but, like, you don't, it's not like you never, you, you, you have to go to physical therapy to use it again. You don't just avoid using it, right? Like, I try to find a metaphor in physical health because mm -hmm. I think it's so helpful. So with anxiety, I do think we've made culturally made some bad choices. Mm -hmm. Like, just because you have anxiety doesn't mean you should avoid um, everything that's mm -hmm. hard for you. Mm -hmm. I don't run the world, so. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think that it can also be um, a tough call because mm -hmm. there's some things where maybe someone shouldn't go into a position, you know. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be an exception where, mm -hmm. oh, actually, this is something they, they probably shouldn't do if it's... But for most people, I do think... Mm -hmm. You know, 
figuring out how to be in the world and, and be okay, mm-hmm. that's, that's building strength. Mm-hmm. That's not, um, that's an important thing too. Yeah, and it, it, I think, don't you think it requires some sort of paradoxical thinking, like I have anxiety yeah. and with anxiety, I can still do this. I just have to do it differently. Like yeah. I have to think about what my pathway is with this. Not when you're in an acute stage of anxiety, like an acute moment, but if you have anxiety, depression, cancer, a broken arm, like you think of, now I do things differently. Like I have this information, I can use this information to right. do things differently. So both things can be true. Right. Like with a broken arm, you might put a sling on your mm-hmm. arm so that you can go to class. Mm-hmm. What's the sling for anxiety? You know, mm-hmm. it's probably a lot of self talk yeah. and figure out different things. There's lots of mm-hmm. ways. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If only we could answer all of these questions with like, <laughs> just do this, 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 and this. And if we could, yes, then yeah. we wouldn't eat a book, I right? Know. It's so it's being human's complicated. Yeah, it is, and beautiful. Yep. One more question. Any last? Aren't we glad she put this book together, though? Like, <laughs> thank you. I mean, it, it, even just reading it, I'm like, oh, I should reflect on this more. I should be thinking about this more. I have more to learn here about being human mm-hmm. and about moving through life. So, yeah, it's fabulous. It's thank fabulous. You.